Hi, I'm Michael Lauder, Educational and Outreach Communications Manager for the Center for Career Discovery and Development at Georgia Tech. If you've seen my previous video about how to craft a resume that will get read, then you know how much emphasis I place on details and the needs of the employer when creating career documents. You don't scrawl out one resume that will be used for every application every time, and your cover letter will take just as much attention as that resume did. And it isn't something you carve in stone. There's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all cover letter because no two jobs will call for the same skill set and experience, but the letter's approach never varies. You craft your cover letter according to the job posting or advertisement. Cover letters are called that for the simple reason that they cover what's in your resume. While the resume is simply a list, what you know and what you've accomplished, a cover letter adds context and qualifies and quantifies certain items in your resume the employer will be interested in. If a resume is a list of what's, then your cover letter contains how, why, when, and the end results. Show the reader how you solved a problem and state why you did it that way if needed. Always include the end result even if it's nothing more than you got a good grade or gave a presentation because all companies are results driven and seek candidates who know how to produce results. A cover letter is not an exercise in free writing, nor is it an essay about how you will benefit from working for the company. It's the rare company that will hire you so you can learn from them and then have you move on. Avoid stating in your letter that going to work for this company will mean you can learn all about a specific topic or field while you're on the job. And don't write that working for the company is a lifelong dream for you. Companies are interested in the skills you bring, not how your life has led you to this point. What you're doing in creating this letter is making yourself attractive to a prospective employer by highlighting specific, definable skills the job calls for and showing you have solved typical problems in lab, coursework, academic projects, or on the job. And because previous behavior is often an indicator of future behavior, a company wants to know what you've done in your life that has taken discipline, study, native intelligence, and initiative. A cover letter establishes a connection between you, the applicant, and a hiring manager and shows that you know what the company seeks in a new hire, that you have studied the company's needs. Your letter can exhibit how well you pay attention to detail, always a selling point for any applicant, and highlight your preparation for any type of challenge. Simply put, an effective cover letter can get you that interview through its narrative about your resume and relevant skills. Remember that almost all companies use keyword search, an easy to implement software that scans application materials for the words and verb phrases the company expects its new hires to be exposed to. Your cover letter is another opportunity before your resume for you to include and expound on these terms. Because of the sheer volume of applications, companies need a way to weed out candidates who don't have enough of the right stuff. And keyword search is used before any human being reads your resume and letter. You'll never be assured of all the keywords the company seeks in your application. But by paying close attention to the job posting, company website, job description, and reading about the company's past and projected future, you can guess at most of them. From my resume video, you'll recall I encourage close attention to a company job posting so you'll know exactly what is sought in a new hire. Your resume should contain as many of the outlined qualifications of the company as possible. A cover letter must mirror what the targeted company wants. Look carefully at the job posting or ad. Your letter is taken directly from what you find under the headings like candidates must possess the following qualifications or duties include the following. 
look at the bulleted items and find three skills you have from classwork, experience, academic projects, or even self-assigned study. Three is your magic number for the content of your letter. Usually these three requirements are taken from the following. One, your core strength, major, field of study, or research, such as industrial engineering with emphasis on optimization and modeling. Two, software and or tools required to do the job which you've used or been exposed to. This set could be anything like Java, Adobe, specialized software, lab equipment, or data analysis. Finally, the last skill set needed will usually be communication abilities, as evidenced by classwork and presentations, previous work duties and campus involvement, or leadership, which is shown through volunteer activities on campus or in the community. Companies seek applicants who are not only smart, but also capable of communicating with a wide audience, with innate abilities to work well alone or with others. Communication and leadership qualities are considered essential skills by most hiring managers, in addition to the technical skills you possess. Presence of these essential skills on a resume and letter are fairly accurate predictors of how management ready a candidate is. And you want to show you're ready to step up as needed. Illustrating and showcasing the three main skills you have that make you a good candidate for the job shows that you're more than just a casual or passive participant in the hiring process. You'll craft a letter even if one is not specifically asked for. Some companies use letter inclusion as an unwritten test, as in, how badly do you want this job? If a space is not included for the letter in the application, you can create a PDF of letter and resume. Make the letter the first page seen because you want your letter read first. The resume can be the next pages. If you're applying online for a position, through a personal contact, you type or paste the letter directly into the body of the email and then attach your resume. Do not create an attachment for each. These letters follow the typical three-paragraph business letter format, which is universally recognized as such. They are left justified with a ragged right margin, contain no indentation, and have one space between paragraphs. And note this fact about a well-crafted cover letter. It will take up most or all of one page. Brevity is key in most business communication, but the cover letter is a place where detail is needed. Translation. If you find you've only typed out roughly half a page, you probably haven't provided enough details about each of the three skills. You won't need anything longer than a page as a rule, but your well thought out letter must be more than a few dashed off sentences. Begin with your address, then date below. Skip two or three lines, type the recipient's full name with no gender title. Company name and address follows. Skip the same number of lines. Use the recipient's full name in the salutation, no gender title. Use a colon, not a comma, after the name. Also note, if you don't have an actual person's name, simply address to Dear Human Resources, Dear Hiring Manager, or something comparable. Do not use To Whom It May Concern, or even worse, Dear Sir or Madam. Visualizing a real person reading your application materials will help you avoid these vague, objectifying salutations. The opening paragraph is formulaic, usually no more than two sentences, and begins by showing the reader where you found the ad or posting, the job title or description, and the three qualifications you possess that will make you an ideal candidate to interview. Your letter should always begin with focus on the reader 
as in the use of the word you or your, and never begin with the word I. Use of the you view shows respect for the time and interests of the reader. The example shown provides the formula for the first paragraph. You're posting on Monster.com for a software specialist with networking skills interests me. With my computer experience, application knowledge, and communication skills, I can serve you well. Many companies do not advertise job openings for a variety of reasons. If you are interested in working for a company, but it has not advertised any available positions, you can try a variation on this opening. This method of job application is called phishing and has proven useful for some applicants. Studies show that as many as 15% of all job interviews are obtained in this manner. Can name of company, your company, use the services of a software specialist who has emphasis on networking and security and possesses proven communication skills. I'm interested in working for you as a. Here is where it can get tricky. You can provide a general description of the ideal job you seek with the company, but don't be too specific. Use the three qualifications you bring with you. The details of these qualifications are critical, but don't make them too defined. Do not begin your letter with, I am seeking a position as, or, I have just graduated with a degree in and wondered if you had any openings for a, or, I feel your company is the foremost authority on and working for you would be a wonderful opportunity for me. Recruiters don't seek your praise for them or their company. They want to know the details of your qualifications. The body paragraphs are where you do your best and hardest work. By showing the recruiter the details of your qualifications, when and where you acquired them, how you use them, and some of the results. Begin by careful analysis of your three selected qualifications and explain where they originated and how you have used them. Show your reader how you have implemented any attained knowledge, how you have been focused, dedicated, attuned to good work and marketability. Quantify with numbers, facts, statistics, and end results of your assignment or project. Now is not the time for false modesty. Provide hard details, good nouns, and verbs. You begin your letter with a focus on the reader. Now it's your turn. If you don't grab your reader's attention immediately with good telling details, numbers, verbs, and outcomes, you run the risk of losing his or her interest, and your letter will end up at the bottom of the stack or not even get printed out. You'll notice that many of the sentences in your body paragraphs begin with the word I. You have to prove that you've done the work the company wants evidence of. So try not to hear your mom's voice in your head telling you to be modest. Never claim to have done something you haven't, of course, but also be explicit about how you did something and even why you did it that way. Your closing paragraph is formulaic as well and where you wrap up your package and reiterate your request. Keep it pleasant and stay focused on your request for an interview. Use the following wording. After you have read my resume for the details of my qualifications, I will be happy to answer any questions. Please contact me at. So we can discuss how my computer experience, abilities with networking security, and proven communication skills will benefit you at. Notice it's a restating and reminder of those three required and critical skills you created your letter around, which you know that company seeks. If you need to hear back from the recruiter by a certain date, you may specify it, but that can easily be interpreted as too pushy, so do so judiciously. You can contact the company about two weeks after your letter and resume have been received if you haven't gotten acknowledgement. Keep your questions brief and upbeat. If your letter has been received, 
Ask if there are any questions you can answer. Reiterate your availability. Be pleasant. A well-crafted cover letter will make all the difference. These letters take time to craft, especially the first one you compose. A lot enough time to get in all the details. Take notes beforehand and work from the job posting. In fact, use as many of the same words or phrases from the posting you can. Remember keyword search. The upside to this kind of work, however, is that you probably will be applying for the same kind of jobs in the same field, so you can recycle much or most of the letter contents as many times as necessary. Be sure to change the details and recipient names and addresses. Cover letters are often the source of consternation because job applicants haven't thought through the use and effectiveness of this document. Using the job posting or the description of the job, which you can often find online, will help you catalog your skills and experience so they can be seen as beneficial to the company. The world is awash in bad letters or lazy ones. Craft a great letter that shows your attention to detail and the needs of the company, outlines the skills you bring, illustrates how you're goal-oriented, and it will get read.